Captain Janeway of the USS Voyager, the first lead female captain on a Star Trek series. However, as some of you already know, this wasn't the first Captain Janeway. Before Kate Mulgrew was cast as Catherine Janeway, filming commenced with Jean-Vievre Bujold as Captain Nicole Janeway. Obviously, things didn't work out and the role was recast. So let's take a look at what's known about the situation, then do a back-to-back -back scene comparison of the two actresses. This is the first Janeway. Nineteen ninety four was the most active time in Star Trek history. Producers had their hands full with wrapping up the Next Generation TV series, establishing Deep Space Nine as its own TV series, making Generations, the first Next Gen movie, and creating Voyager. With that context, having to replace a lead actress on a new series isn't a decision anyone made lightly. When cameras rolled on Star Trek Voyager, Jean Vievre Bujol was in place as Captain Nicole Janeway, or rather, Nicole Janeway, since the actress was French-Canadian. Her first day of filming was September 8, 1994. On September 9, 1994, the producers released this statement that Bujol had resigned from the production. Jean-Vievre Bujol has resigned her role in Star Trek Voyager. After several days of production, she realized that the rigors of episodic television were too demanding. We will remain in production while continuing our search for the best possible captain, and fully expect to meet our January 1995 launch date. The phrasing is interesting here. Before I go on any further, the following is purely my own impression of what's going on. I'm not trying to put words in anyone's mouth. Anyway, in business, especially in high profile positions, when someone is fired, they're given the opportunity to resign, to save face, which might be the case here. Usually that's followed with some line like, we wish so-and-so the best of luck in future endeavors. There's nothing like that here. Simply another sentence about still meeting production deadlines. As we covered earlier, the producers already had their hands full with Deep Space Nine and Generations. So having to go back to square one and recast a lead role is no small task. You need to see if your backup choice is still available, negotiate contracts, and bring them up to speed on everything going on. In any case, Kate Mulgrew was brought on, and the rest is history. So let's do a back-to-back -back scene comparison of Bujol and Mulgrew's Janeway. This is the scene where the USS Voyager is sucked into the Delta Quadrant. The Cardassians gave us the last known heading of the Maquis ship, and we have charts of the plasma storm activity the day it disappeared. With a little help, we might be able to approximate its course. The Cardassians gave us the last known heading of the Maquis ship, and we have charts of the plasma storm activity the day it disappeared. With a little help, we might be able to approximate its course. Quick time out here. This shot of Janeway's hand on the console is identical in both scenes, so it's possible that this is the only remnant of Bujold to make it into the completed episode that aired on TV. Just a possibility. The Cardassians claim they forced the Maquis ship into a plasma storm where it was destroyed. But our probes haven't picked up any debris. The Cardassians claim they forced the Maquis ship into a plasma storm where it was destroyed. But our probes haven't picked up any debris. I'm reading a coherent tetrion beam scanning us. Origin, Mr. Kim. I'm reading a coherent tetrion beam scanning us. Origin, Mr. Kim. Red alert. Move us away from it, Lieutenant. New heading 411180. Red alert. Move us away from it, Lieutenant. New heading 411180. The graviton field had no effect. Full impulse. The graviton field had no effect. Full impulse. Can we go to war? Not until we clear the plasma field, Captain. Can we go to warp? Not until we clear the plasma field, Captain. Brave for impact. Five, four, three, two. Brace for impact. Three. From this comparison, Mulgrew delivers her lines with more oomph and urgency, which fits the scene better. Bujold's line delivery is more reserved and tempered. Ultimately, We'll never know how Bujold's Janeway would have evolved, but it's safe to say it would have been very different than Mulgrew's portrayal. It's also worth mentioning that Susan Gibney was in the running to play Janeway. Previously, she played Dr. Leah Brahms, one of the Enterprise D's designers, and Geordi's holodeck buddy. Where? I'm outraged by this. 
I have been invaded, violated. How dare you use me like this? Later, she played Captain Benteen of the USS Lakota. The USS Lakota is the final use of the Excelsior model. Not really related, but I just figured I'd throw it in. So that's the video. This video was initially a segment in the USS Voyager retrospective I'm working on right now, but I felt like it was worth fleshing out into its own video here. That's sort of the idea behind this junk ball transmission series. If you're new around here, there's more Star Trek videos on the channel. Feel free to subscribe if you want, or not, whatever, it's free. I love making these videos, but production costs can add up over time, so if you'd like to contribute via Patreon, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.